Now that's enough of that. I've already done a review video on the CX-5, so if you want all the details about it, go watch that and I will give you the link. Now, why am I doing this again? Well, now there's a new trim level, the Signature, and they've put a turbo in here in all-wheel drive, which is utterly fantastic, and that's what you're going to learn about. You're going to learn about the driving dynamics, what's great about the CX-5 and why I said it was one of the best SUVs of 2018, but also the things they need to improve on from interior and some other aspects. So let's hop on in and take a look at those. When you plant yourself on the inside of the Signature trim, there's going to be a few things you notice or don't notice. The first thing is this chocolatey brown leather that they use in here on the door panels, the seats, and the center console. Everything else is black but this. And I've had people like, is that really brown? And I'm like, yeah, it's brown. And honestly, I didn't even realize it was brown for two days after driving this. I must be blind. And then they use this matte wood that runs on the door panel and it run, runs across the entire center dash. And it is just subtle enough not to be obnoxious. And they, they go with this kind of matte chrome look around the vents. There's pretty much matte textures all over the place, except for the piano gloss in this huge center console area and the doors. And of course, the center console looks disgusting. There's way too much of it, all the dust, the typical stuff that you find with this. Now, in terms of everything else, this is classic, classic current generation Mazda interior. Everything is ergonomically sound. It feels really well put together. This is a much more quiet interior than it used to be. The upper dashboard texture is good. I mean, all the materials in here are very high quality, and I think it's going to surprise a lot of people, namely for this price point between $35,000 and $40,000. The HVAC controls have been updated to include heated and cooled seats, including a steering wheel heater. And I'm going to get into more of that in a second. But everything else in here kind of works as directed. There's this level of simplicity that just kind of surrounds the whole cabin. All right, it's time to get this out of the way. There's a reason why so many people consistently say the CX-5 is one of the best SUVs to drive. And that's because Mazda took the money and engineering and put it in the parts of the car that you don't see, the underpinnings. They spent time on the suspension tuning, the steering feel, the engine design, the transmission design, and that is what at its core makes this such a compelling vehicle to, to buy for the price range. And I said it was one of the best SUVs last year, and I'm going to contend that it still is, and now with the turbo, it is far better than it was, namely with all-wheel drive. But here's where Mazda's fallen behind, and a lot of it has to do with the fact that they don't sell a ton of cars like some of the competitors. You know, they're not going to sell 500,000 CX-5s, and without having that revenue, they can't update everything as fast as the other manufacturers. And I'm going to cover that now. The infotainment. They have updated it, finally. It has <laughs> rewinding satellite radio. It has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. It seems to be a little bit quicker. But the core, the core problems are still there. It's cumbersome to get around. Certain things make no sense, like... Uh, I can't turn off the HUD permanently, the heads-up display. If I go to turn it off in the screen here, it comes right back on when it starts up. The other things are the mapping software, which I had a problem in my 2014. It's still not fixed. It will show you the upcoming street on the screen, which is great until it freezes up and gets stuck on that same street. And the problem is at night, when I want to go turn the display off, the display is stuck on because it's still showing that last street from like 25 minutes ago. And to resolve that issue, I just ejected the SD card for the mapping software so I can turn the screen off. The second thing is like just little things in terms of programming. I talked about the seat heaters and seat coolers and the steering wheel heater. You go in here, you turn it on, great. You turn the car off, you get back on. Well, it doesn't remember that you turned it on before you so you have to go turn it back on. And it's weird because it still remembers your last temperature that you set for your HVAC, but it won't remember stuff like that. The other thing, when I have the screen off and I want to turn the volume up and down, well, now that you have a digital gauge cluster, why can't it show me the volume in the digital gauge cluster or the HUD? Nope, it's got to turn the screen back on at night that I've just turned off just to show me the volume. And it's a lot of these programming things, a lot of the like common sense logic things that they haven't gotten right yet, and I know it's going to take time. The core of the CX-5 is great. It really is, and I think 
The best part about that is the driving dynamics will still be great in five years when you don't care about infotainment anymore or you don't care about who has the best digital gauge cluster and all that or 5G LTE. This is still going to always be a great driving vehicle. But the other aspect I wanted to talk about is the dealership experience. People don't talk about that enough. So I'm going to go visit my local Honda or local Mazda dealership in Crystal Lake, Illinois, and talk to them and see what it's like to buy one of these. So I'm here to ask you a few questions. Great. Um, you know, this is a press car. This isn't in one of your. This is not one of your inventory vehicles. So this isn't about like a straight up promotion to buy this car. It's more to learn about the Mazda buying experience. So how does how is Mazda how does Mazda work with you guys? What have you seen over the evolution of you working here, and how is it different than some other brands? Okay, so for the longest time they were always sport, sport, sport. It's gonna handle great. It's going to you know respond quickly. It's gonna accelerate nicely. It's gonna brake nicely. But now you get into, you can't, you can only go so far with sport, I think. And when they get into these uh, premium touches that they're doing, it looks like they're designing less on a computer and more from their heart. Okay. Or, yeah, so that's the changes that I've seen over the years. Like, so they're, they're trying to move towards that mid-range to upscale without being so focused on these, are, they're, they're going away from like, hey, this is a driver's car, everything's driver focused to more of a, just the more aesthetic touches yes and doing things that feel good in design like making it more human centric mazda doesn't sell a ton of vehicles compared to a lot of other brands so Correct. what are your typical customers like what's the the typical cx5 customer for example what are they like is it... okay so the cx5 as itself it checks so many boxes as far as okay maybe i need to bring clients with me maybe i need to travel with my grandkids safely uh maybe it's i'm just starting to have a family and i, I need something safe and a good amount of storage no i don't want to say this i don't want to be disrespectful but that sounds like something that anybody would say about any SUV. okay what, Challenge speci accepted. what specifically about the cx5 is a customer going to come in here like, I like this better. What is it doing better than every other SUV? Because there's a million of them. Okay, then it has to get to the drive. I get passionate about the drive, the way okay. it feels. And that's really what it's all about. Once you can, you can talk about all the features and things like that, but when you get to drive it and you feel what they did with human sector touches and, and the way that this responds, that's when I think they say the feel of the wheel seals the deal. Okay, all right. It's test drive, all really. Right. So... So since I misspoke and said you were in the car business for like two weeks, now that I know that you've been into this forever, what advice can you give shoppers, specifically people that are looking for vehicles, or any vehicle for mm -hmm. that matter, what advice can you give somebody yep. that could help them out? Learn a salesman's name of in the place that you want to buy a car. Okay, so yeah. that's the first step like when you come in. Make, create a relationship. Okay, create yeah. a relationship. And what about, you know, maybe not everybody's like you, where you care, you're not out to hurt people you know right. I mean, or just yeah you're not there to use people so what about uh, somebody that maybe goes to a deal maybe even a mazda dealership that's not properly run how do you spot where you should kind of maybe move to somebody else go to a different dealership what are some red flags from your experience if you don't it's follow-up it's always follow-up and that's um can be it's communication and follow-up if you are in communication with somebody and taking care of them responding to their request efficiently, timely, and, and meaningfully, I, you can go home at night and, and know that you did everything in your power to take care of that customer to the best of their ability or your okay. ability. Look forward to seeing you at Mazda Crystal Lake if that's the case. I'm James Orton. Have a great day. So much like the Mazda 6 Turbo, what I notice is this is all about instantaneous and gratuitous levels of torque from a four-cylinder. It gives you this thrust immediately, and then the power or the torque starts to fall off as you rev it out. And you can even see the way that the transmission's programmed in automatic mode. It, it will 
upshift slightly early just to keep you into that area where the torque is at. Now the transmission performance, yes, it is a six-speed automatic, but this is definitely one of the best and most usable automatic transmissions you'll get in, in an affordable price range in a modern car, and it's because it's super responsive, it doesn't gear hunt, it always seems to get into the right gear when you need it, it downshifts quickly, it upshifts quickly, and your manual control, if you choose to use that, is amazing. It rev matches downshifts, it's quick to respond, and it responds to your manual inputs like you would expect a manual control to. It won't automatically upshift, namely when you have the traction control off. It feels like a true automated manual. And I think, again, the CX-5 is one of the best SUVs for a few reasons. And I, I'm talking about this a lot in this video, but the driving dynamics at its core, the underneath of this vehicle, is what makes it so special. The fact that I can, well, let's downshift here and go around a corner and throw it around with reckless abandon. Holds, gear, holds gears every time I hit the fuel cutoff. It just sticks there until I upshift. And you can drive it like you would a more performance-oriented vehicle. The next thing to talk about is ride quality. And this is something that is extremely important to people that want an SUV. You want it to be comfortable, compliant. You don't want it to be overly stiff. And I think this is where Mazda has greatly improved the CX-5 and pretty much every vehicle in the current generation. They've quieted them down. They figured that out. So they've reduced a lot of road noise. The second thing is they took the suspension tuning in terms of dampers, sway bars, bushings, all that. And they went to the very edge. Before, the previous generation CX-5 was a little bit more firm and they, they were more focused on driving dynamics than comfort. So they took it to the edge here and then they just dialed it back right between that line of being firm and a little bit medium firm. And I found that over every single pavement type, this is just riding that line between being uh, just a bit too annoying and jolty and it, it is good over every single pavement type it doesn't crash over bumps it handles potholes bumps you know speed bumps pretty much everything namely in the winter where the pavement's even worse i found that this is definitely one of the best riding best balanced rides that you're gonna get now if you want something super soft this this is not it but I'm telling you right now, it's not offensive at all. You're gonna, you're gonna get in here and really appreciate how responsive everything is. And the other thing that Mazda does really well is there's not any gimmicks. There's not three different steering modes. There's one steering mode, you touching the steering wheel, none of your electronics changes that. It just always feels as good as it possibly can for a modern car. Brake pedal feel is natural. You get into it like you would. If you want more brake pressure, you push down harder. If you want less, you know, you, it, it's just simple. It's very linear. A lot of these newer SUVs and CUVs are getting, they're trying to, like I talk about a lot, they're trying to do tricks to make you feel like you're in a better car than you really are, where the, you breathe on the brake pedal and it's like slams your head against the steering wheel. This is a very natural driving experience. And the best part really is that you feel super confident to drive it harder when you need to. If you're in an evasive maneuver, you don't feel like it's gonna tip or roll over. And it's just a testament to how much time they spent on the overall vehicle dynamics. And yes, they're not the best at all the electronic stuff yet because you know what? They focused on the fundamentals first. And I think if you're okay with that, you're gonna enjoy this vehicle for years to come. And that's why I'm so high on it. But enough of all that, let's get into the final thoughts. Final thoughts on the Mazda CX-5 Signature Turbo. And at this point, you probably already know what I'm gonna say. James said it at the Mazda dealership. It's about the drive. That's what Mazda has done the best. That's where all their money went initially. And you feel it just, you feel so connected driving this thing. You can really whip it around. It doesn't totally fall apart when you're pounding it. And the turbo has totally improved this. With the all wheel drive setup, it is a lot of fun to drive. And they've tuned it where you get all the torque immediately because that's the way most people drive their car. They're, they're not flat out. Now that's not my favorite style of tuning. I feel like it, it sacrifices too much at the upper RPM range. There's not, there's not a lot going on there. You're staying more in like, 
you know, basically 1500 to 4,000 RPMs. And you know, if you like that driving experience, you're gonna love this. There's a ton of thrust. Now, like the title suggests, it's the best, but not the brightest. And that's because, well, technology, they're behind and they've tried to make up for it by adding certain things that people have requested. And they're more tacked on than properly integrated. And I talked about that. And I'm sure they're gonna work on improving that as the newer vehicles come out. Because as we already know, there's something about getting in an interior space and being wowed by technology. That is what people are obsessed with now. And if you miss that connection right away, whether the car's good or bad, that's what gets people hooked in. Hooked in. And I think Mazda's starting to realize that. So hopefully they can combine the core good things about the driving experience and improving the technology side. Now here's the problems I had with it. There's a couple. There was an annoying chirp coming from under the hood and I'm pretty sure it's the high pressure fuel pump, but take a listen to that. Now this is the side effect of quieting down an interior space so much now you hear creaks and rattles, which this car didn't have, but you start to hear other things and it drives you nuts. So I had to turn up the radio, but it's one of those things I noticed. The second thing that I had an issue with, and I've driven this with regular gas and, and premium unleaded at 93 octane, and I still feel like many turbocharged cars suffer from this. Power is inconsistent. And I felt when the temperature got really cold in the teens in Fahrenheit, it like the turbo disappeared. Even on premium fuel, when I ran two tanks through it, it's still like it wasn't giving you all the boost all the time. You'd accelerate once and it was great. And then the next time it was like, well, what's going on here? And I think, you know, again, this is why I'm not a huge fan of turbocharged motors but I'll be curious to see what people think driving this. I didn't really notice it so much on the Mazda 6, but I noticed it here. So that's definitely something to talk about. Last but not least, appreciate you watching this. Take care, I'll see you next video. This savage geese, I hate him, I hate him. I'm gonna show you how to get back at him on Yelp and all that other stuff. <laughs>